It was 30 years ago that I first walked up to these school gates wearing my oversized green school blazer. I'd come from a local primary school, Hayes Lane, and even though I was terrified, I knew that I was going to get a first-rate academic education here. Altrincham Grammar, like Trafford's other grammar schools, selects the top 30 or 40 percent of the ability range. Coming here depends not on how big your parents' bank balance is, but on whether you can pass the school's entrance exam. The school's head boy, Bill Algarney, comes from Manchester, and his dad is a taxi driver. He has 10 A stars at GCSE and hopes to study medicine. Some schools might choose people based on faith and things like that. Why can't you have a school that offers a free education but just chooses people based on academic ability? And that's what this school is. Critics claim that grammar schools are dominated by the middle classes and the numbers qualifying for free school meals is low. As the remaining grammars tend to be in relatively affluent areas, that's not very surprising. But in an area like Trafford, where there are several grammar schools, the intake is more mixed than the statistics might suggest. And we've got about 20% um, in the sixth form who are on educational maintenance allowance. And what that means is that the students are there from backgrounds with relatively low incomes. And that seems to me, to, again, to point towards the breadth of the backgrounds that we have in this school. When I was here, Labour and the Liberal Democrats wanted to close Scrappers Grammar Schools down. I got involved in local politics because I wanted to try to help keep them open. Yet even now, with the grammar schools still flourishing, producing outstanding results, we still hear the same old arguments about selection. People say that even if schools like this are doing a great job for the most academically able children, it's wrong to consign the other 60% uh, to what they describe as a second-class education. Come with me and I'll show you why they're wrong. Just a couple of miles away in Timperley, this is Wellington School, a non-selective high school, what we used to call a secondary modern. Wellington is a thriving, oversubscribed technology college with countless awards to its name. So you're, you're just practicing. Ofsted says it's excellent, putting it in the top 5% of schools in the country, and Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Schools described it as outstanding. Last year, 68% of pupils here got at least five good GCSEs, comfortably beating the national average of 62%. And the results of the grammar and high schools combined put Trafford at the top in the country with 74.6%. Head teacher Julie Armstrong has very clear views about why the system here works. One of the major factors is the quality of the staff. Uh, we, we take a, a long time over a recruitment of the right staff, but I'm very lucky in that I've got staff who are prepared to go the extra mile. We have supportive parents, um, and um, I have a, an excellent governing body who are tasked to provide the very best resources for the school, which of course um, they do. Um, and students know exactly what's expected of them. It's about very clear lines of what's expected from students. So Casey, what do you think you've gained from coming to Wellington? Well, I think I've gained like a bit of experience with, you know, like confidence and things of just being around different people and just like doing different subjects that you wouldn't do because schools kind of pick what subjects they want to do and this school's picked like lots of different ones which lots of school wouldn't. <laughs> The noticeable thing about the results here in Trafford is the consistency. Standards at the end of primary school are very high, but local authorities which are equally good when pupils are 11 start to slide back when pupils reach GCSE and A-level. In contrast, Trafford, alongside other selective areas, stays at the top of the league tables right through to 18. Here in Trafford, grammar schools and high schools work well together to deliver the very best results anywhere in the country. There are plenty of wealthier local authority areas than Trafford which should be doing better for their children. Teaching pupils by ability and in a way that brings the best out of them has led to outstanding results here year after year. I believe there is a huge amount that the rest of the country could learn from Trafford. <laughs>